But until very recently, we haven't been able to build any automations inside of Clio Manage without having to rely on external automation platforms, such as Zapier or Make.com. This, however, has now changed. I'm very excited to talk today about a new feature released by Clio called Automated Workflows. Now, with automated workflows, you will be able to automate certain key case management activities throughout the case lifecycle. At this point in time, the feature set of the workflows is still somewhat basic, but you can already do quite a few things with it. You can automatically apply a meta template when a meta is converted from Clear Grow to Clear Manage. You can generate a document based on a template whenever a meta stage is changed inside of Clear Manage. And you can also automatically assign a task list. Now, all of these you'll also be able to customize depending on which practice area the case pertains to. I think that's a great base for Clio to start working from and expanding this functionality in the future. So I'm extremely excited to be sharing this with you today. I'll walk through all the functionality that this feature already offers and show you how you can make the best use out of it in your practice today. Let's get going. Hey there, my name is Martin Kravchenko and I'm the Chief Technology Officer at Swans, where we help law firm owners and operators make the best use out of their technology systems to grow their profitability and scale their practice. Now, an important disclaimer before we continue. Automated workflows is a feature only reserved at this point to the advanced and complete tier of Clear Manage. So unless you have one of those, you won't be able to access this feature. Another important thing is uh, at this point in time, they're still releasing it for beta, beta feature. So you may not yet have it in your account, but if that's the case, don't worry. Within the next few weeks, you should be able to get access to it. Once you do, you'll see this button over here called try out automated workflows. Now let's actually get going. In this particular example, I will be uh, focusing on the practice area of personal injury. I have gone into matters and then stages um, tab over here. And then I have uh, created a few stages that uh, all of the cases inside of personal injury will go through. So treatment, document collection, demand drafting, and then negotiations. You can obviously you know, customize this to your liking. You can drag them around as you wish. Based on this, we'll be able, be able to define our automated workflows. All right, let's click this button over here, try out our automated workflows. Uh, it will ask you to log in into your Clean Manage account, and then you'll land on a page that looks just like this. Again, we have these three kind of templates that we can now start using. Let's start with the first one, assign a task list. Essentially what it does is when a matter stage has been changed, then it will assign a task list to one of the people responsible assigned to the case. Let's click on that and let's call it a personal injury document collection task list. The practice area in here, we will be, we'll select personal injury. Now, then we have two options, right? We can define, first of all, the required field is uh, to which matter stage uh, has a matter been updated, right? In addition to that, we have an optional field called from matter stage. So how does it work? So imagine that I have this Richardson matter over here. If I define that in here in two matter stage, that whenever it goes into document collection, then I'll assign the task list. Then anytime that it enters the document collection stage, that task list will be assigned. Now imagine a potential scenario, right? Where the matter, you know, you collect the documents and then goes into demand drafting, but then you realize that you still need to collect some additional documents. In that case, you may move the matter back into document collection. In the case that we don't define the from matter stage option over here, the task list will be added to the matter again, right? So potentially you'll have duplicated task. To prevent it from happening, we can define this optional from matter stage field. So for example, we will only trigger this automation whenever the stage is updated from treatment to a document collection. In the case then that this matter moves around after that, doesn't really matter. The automation will not be triggered. We won't get any duplicates. Fantastic. So let's move it back for now. Practice area personal injury from treatment to document collection. Let's now assign a particular task list. Now I've already defined a task list called 
in the same way, personal injury document collection. So let's choose it over here. As a reminder, you can define task list by going into the task section over here, then task list, and then you'll be able to define um, a few tasks in each one of these um, uh, in, a, in each one of these lists and define relative dates as well uh, to them. Now, important, you'll also be able to define either a specific person as an assignee of that task or whoever the list will be assigned to. This will become important in just a second. So, uh, task list, personal injury document collection. And then the question is, to whom do we assign it to? And very uh, important feature that has been missing from Clio Manager that I'm actually very excited that they have added now is instead of only having originating an attorney and responsible attorney, we also now have a third one called responsible staff. Now, we're able to assign the responsible staff, which can be, for example, the paralegal, the case manager on the case uh, quite easily just by going into edit matter. And then in here we'll have the attorneys and then the responsible staff. If you hover over the help icon, it tells you again, examples of responsible staff could be paralegal or case manager, leverage this for task assignments through automated workflows. Uh, absolutely love this. You'll also be able to see the responsible staff if you look at the matters list um, in, the, in the main matters. Matter. All right, so to whom we are assigning it to, right? Imagine that we want to assign this now to the responsible staff, let's say the case manager or the paralegal on the case. Importantly, if in our task list, right, we have said that some task goes to the list as in in this case, it will go to the responsible staff member that we have assigned in, in the task list, uh, sorry, in the automated workflow. Meanwhile, those that are assigned to a particular person will always go to that person. We'll see it in action in just a moment. So fantastic. Uh, let's click save as new automation. The automation is now saved under the my automations list in here and remember to turn it on for it to actually to start working. All right, active, it's now successfully been updated. Let's go to our case. Let's note that as a responsible attorney, we have myself and as a responsible staff member, we have Laura Martinez uh, defined over here. Now, if we update now the matter stage into document collection, we can either do it from here or by simply dragging that matter inside of the stages functionality. This new automation should now get executed. Let's log into here and see if those tasks have been assigned. Fantastic. As you can see, all of these tasks have been assigned correctly. Uh, we have the three tasks that were assigned to Laura Martinez as the responsible uh, staff member on, on the case and one of them that went to me because again, in the task list, it was specifically assigned to myself personally. And obviously all the due dates have been correctly calculated. Fantastic. Now we can see the history of all these automations inside of our CLI automated workflows automation history. So if you click into that, we'll see all of the automation that have run. Um, if there have been any failures, for example, you know, let's say uh, the responsible staff member has been missing. Uh, from uh, from the matter, they will go in the failed category over here. We can see uh, when the automation ran, what was its status, we have the link to the matter, uh, we have the automation name and any deed. Let me actually now show you what would happen if the automation were to fail. So let's go back to our matter over here, click edit matter. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna purposefully uh, remove the responsible stuff. We know that our automation depends on it and we will move the matter back into, into treatment, right? So now when we update it into document collection, that automation will run. And as you can see, error failed to run automated workflow due to missable, missing responsible stuff. If we now refresh our automation history, we'll see that we have this failed execution over here and we have the details. Failed to run automated workflow due to missing responsible stuff. What should you do in, in case that happens? Uh, simply go into edit matter, you know, fill out the responsible uh, stuff or whatever you know, field was missing, move it back to the, to the previous stage and then move it to the current stage again. That will re-execute the, the workflow and hopefully at the point in time it will execute uh, successfully. Let's now go ahead and look at the second automation template that uh, Clio provides to us, generating a document when a matter stage changes. Uh, so now obviously you can define uh, document templates by going documents and then uh, 
templates and uh, categories. We will to upload any uh, document templates here utilizing the merge fields that are available depending on you know, your custom field configuration and any of the standard fields available on each matter. These you can define by going to settings and then documents, document template, merge fields. Now, imagine that we have the following scenario, right? We have collected all of our documents and we now want to start kick things off with uh, demand drafting for our personal injury matter over here. We would want to define an automation that whenever the, the, the matter enters the demand drafting stage, it automatically generates a templated version of a demand letter, which will then can be uh, customized by, by the firm stuff. Let's uh, go into our automated workflows, uh, click on this generate a document template. The practice area will again be personal injury. Uh, in this case, let's not define this uh, from matter stage. We'll just define uh, what stage the matter should be changed to only. Uh, this will be uh, demand drafting. And then the document template that we uh, have already over here, PI demand letter dot doc. We can also potentially rename it to another file name if we so desire. Now let's call this automation personal injury uh, demand letter generation. We're going to save this as a new automation and we're going to turn it on. Let's now look at our matter, see what documents it has at this point in time, and then actually trigger this automation and see how it works. Let's go over to documents. As you can see, at the moment, we don't really have any documents at all on this matter. That's absolutely fine. Let's now change its stage to demand drafting. Again, can either be done through here or directly on the matter screen. And just like that, we should now receive, okay, your document is being generated via automated workflows. It will be available in a few minutes. Fantastic. Let's now go over here and see if it has already been generated. There we go. Uh, for each document generation, importantly, we'll get both a PDF version and also a doc or docx version uh, for Word. If we actually open it up, let's see how it looks like. Now, obviously, this is a quite um, simple template just for the purpose of the example. But as you can see, the client's name has been populated, the defendant's name uh, has been populated, and also it has filled in the responsible uh, attorney in here based on the configuration that we had inside of our uh, matter over here. And as before in the previous example, we can see uh, the log of this automation run in our automation history inside of automated workflows over here. And lastly, let's look at the third action that we have over here, applying a meta template when a meta is converted from clear grow. Now, unfortunately, that will only work with matters being converted from clear grow that won't work with, let's say, matters uh, entering clear managed from Lomatics or any other CRM system. So let's set it up. Uh, here, the setup options are uh, more limited. Uh, we can choose the practice area. We can then potentially also choose a specific attorney uh, for whom this uh, automation will run, right? If another attorney is set, then this automation will not get executed. And finally, the matter template. Now, matter templates you can define by going into your matter screen and then matter templates over here. And then you can define matter templates to preset, for example, specific attorneys, uh, specific billing preferences, uh, document folders, and even assign a default task list uh, from, from the get-go. So in this case, for example, we are creating, uh, setting it as a contingency fee and also setting uh, document folders for medical records and medical. So let's finish the setup over here. We'll call it a personal injury conversion from grow, save as new automation, and then turn this on. Let's now head to our Clio Grow accounts. We have Alex Garcia over here in the personal injury dog bite. Let's open up the matter and click convert to Clio Manage. Now matter status open, practice area will be personal injury. Uh, the responsible attorney will be myself. And in here, let's define uh, the billing method contingency. Obviously in that case, the matter template <coughs> configuration for the billing preferences doesn't really, it's not as important. But anyways, let's continue. Let's convert matter, successfully converted matter in Clio Manage. Let's open it up and see if we have those additional folders that we define, have defined in our meta template. Open up documents. And just like that, you can see that we have this medical bills and medical records 
defined over here, meaning that the template has been correctly assigned as soon as the matter was converted. Now, if we go to our automation history, as well, we'll be able to see that this has been executed successfully and the personal injury matter template has been applied uh, to this matter from the get-go. To wrap things up, I hope that you have enjoyed this walkthrough. Very exciting step um, for Clio to make by enabling this new feature. Can already do quite a few things in terms of task list and document generation, which were previously they need to be uh, either manually handled by staff members or again, built out with a bit more complex structure with external automation tools. Uh, definitely fertile ground as well to be expanding upon this feature and bringing even more features and capabilities into it. If you get stuck, please let me know. I would be happy to help you out either here or, or on LinkedIn. And if you like this video, please uh, give it a like, subscribe for more. I'm constantly releasing content about Clio Manage, Lomatics, and tutorials on how you, as a law firm owner operator, can make the best use of the legal tech tools that we have available on the market now. Thank you very much. Have a fantastic day and see you in the next one.